Okay, today is the big day. We have the electrician coming out to fire up the backup generator. So we decided to have a backup generator installed. We went with the Briggs & Stratton Pro Protect PP26. Uh, we had to go with the large size no matter what brand we went with because we have a three and a half ton heat pump and then a 40 gallon hot water heater and a 25 cubic foot refrigerator. Uh, so those are our big loads and you know actually when the power goes out we really don't need those loads on there. We could actually cut them off if we had to but what you want to know about generators is it's going to burn the same amount of fuel whether there's a load on it or not. Oops. The uh, fuses <laughs> flew off of there and I think the electrician is going to need those. So here we are at the unit. So a lot of things I had to do myself as far as getting ready for the unit to be installed. Uh, there was the concrete pad to put the unit on. That had to be done uh, ahead of time. And I'll show you the other concrete pad for the tank that had to be done ahead of time. There's nothing really to show on the inside because the meter uh, went up into the house and so they put the power panel for the backup generator over here to the side and just ran the line uh, from the power company to the switch and then refed the uh, inside of the house so it's just a new cable running from the line to inside of the house. Okay, first off, I'm not electrical. So when I spec this job out, I told them I wanted an automatic switch. I did not want to have to come out here and switch off the power and switch on the generator and then power up the house and do all this rigmarole. I just didn't want to do it. If the power goes out and it's sensed that the power goes out, there's like a 15 second delay then the generator will fire up and power the house. So here in the back we had a little bit of an issue. Uh, the vent over here had to be five feet away from any spark sources. So that was a bit of fun for them to figure all that out. So there's the line. He ran the copper line underneath the siding there to kind of conceal it a little bit. Then he has his regulator with the vent and it's coming down going into the generator to supply the fuel source. Now down here at the bottom of the generator that piece, that pipe that connects there, it's flexible, you see it's twisted a little bit, that actually came with the generator. So luckily he found that. That was buried in the bottom. I had no idea. I was completely ignorant of where everything was. So he was able to find it buried in the generator over here at the bottom. Which were also the books. The books were down there too. So now I can read up on it. And uh, see how often I need to test it. Change the oil and uh, do stuff like that. So we have gas logs, so they had to uh, tap into the gas logs, which I'm not going to show you because it's really hidden. Uh, the line is running along the siding there. He went into the house right here. There's the access to the sunroom. He had to be away from that electrical outlet. So we ran in there and then the gas logs are connected underneath the uh, sunroom here going into the house. So the other thing I had to pay for was a tank and that's a 500 gallon tank and the salesman kept wanting me to put a smaller slab on there but I did not want a smaller slab because I don't want to weed eat under the tank and then the installer said it was a great idea and they could actually put two 500 gallon tanks side by side if I wanted to and it's also big enough if I wanted a thousand gallon tank so now that tank 
you know they only fill it up to 80 percent that tank uh, will hold 400 gallons that's how much they'll put into it when they fill it up and that is about three days worth of backup generator runtime it's about 72 hours of runtime and if I didn't mention it earlier the runtime is going to be 72 hours no matter what load is on there so anyway so they kept saying well we'll save you some money because we won't have to run copper piping the whole way and you know I didn't care about the few dollars it was saving me I mean yeah it was a couple hundred or whatever but it's like three dollars a foot for copper and it's like 15 cents or 50 cents I can't remember a foot for the for the plastic line that they have running here and under the ground they ran it in front of the concrete pads I wanted it underneath but that's okay uh, there's our old hundred gallon tank that needs to be picked up by the people that own it and it ran over here to the other side of the house over here so they came up out of the ground they put a shutoff valve on there which is good and then they ran copper and that is a big line because they had to use the one inch copper line uh, to make sure the generator is not starved for fuel so that's why they have that extremely large copper line running there getting back to the tank that was a big deal I had to purchase the tank and have it installed. In other words, I couldn't get a contractor to do it all. I actually had to do everything myself. Um, I did get a subcontractor to do the concrete work for me. I kind of, the way I said it earlier for the uh, generator is like I did it, but I did not do it. I, uh, I hired a subcontractor. So the concrete slab was in, then one day the uh, fuel company showed up, installed the tank yesterday, <laughs> installed it. They did a great job. I'm extremely happy with them. They did an absolutely marvelous job, but I had to buy the tank. Now, they kept saying, you could rent it, you could rent it, you could rent it. But the math was, in seven years of renting, you bought a new tank. Well, seven years may seem like a long time if you're 17, but seven years is not a long time when you're older. So, I just bought it outright. And we'll see how it goes. Alright, since this is my tank, I'm keep it clean. They have their little clip on here. But I'm going to put something underneath here on my camera. I'm going to put something underneath here so it doesn't chip when it's closed so it's uh, year built 2023 they told me the guys that installed it told me that they have tanks that they keep refilling that were built in the 1930s so these tanks last a very long time so we have the valve coming out into your regulator and that's really what cost you know you basically buy I had to buy three regulators one at the tank uh, one at the uh, backup generator and one for the gas lines oops hit the camera so here's the tank all of the blah 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 stuff all the legalese uh, vapor pressure cannot exceed 215 psi gauge so there is a gauge remote ready. Oh, I guess we can uh, see the uh, tank gauge remotely if we wanted to install uh, uh, a cap on here that, that'll transmit it. All right, I'm gonna get my little cushion things here and uh, install that real quick. So I do have uh, options. I've got these strips. I think I'm going to start with that. If they don't work, I have some round pads about the size of this uh, tag right here. 
then I can put on key locations to, uh, you know, set that in. But anyway, I thought they were kind of big, so I'm going to try these little strips here first and see how long they last. All right, let's get some of this rain off of here. All right, got one on the side. I'll put one on the other side. I've got one in the back. I'll put one in the front. So let me do that. This test run, we're simulating the power's been uh, lost and the generator's running the house. He was explaining to me that it runs for a period of time after the power comes back on. So uh, it waits when the power comes, goes off, and then it runs after the power comes on for about five minutes. Just uh, FYI. All right, so there is the blue light special on our Briggs and Stratton brakes and scrap them uh, Power Protect PP26. Now the PP26 is the biggest one they have now. Uh, they just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger over time, and this is the latest and greatest. Also. Uh, he told me I do not need a soft start on my heat pump, so I am not going to install it. He said it's completely unnecessary and it actually slows them down a little bit, so I took his word for it on that. Uh, maintenance is real easy. The uh, oil change, there's a hose. Uh, like on a riding lawnmower, you know, you have that extension hose on there. You can get to it real easy. He said they do adjust the valves every year. He said the valves kind of go a little bit. He says they're more sensitive than your typical gasoline lawnmower engine. So he recommends checking that. I can't remember my service contract, whether I have them coming out the first year. Also, he said uh, April 1st or April 2nd, something like that, and September 1st, 2nd, something like that, it'll f run for a little while, like, I think he, I can't remember how long he said, but it'll run, I think he said like 40 minutes, but hey, don't trust my memory, but anyway, so twice a year it does that uh, to make sure everything's all good and ready, probably charges the uh, battery up because he put a car battery in there which makes sense it's got to start somehow right and everything is hunky-dory oh so in addition to opening the lid and he showed me how to switch it to manual and automatic because there is the on off switch which he recommends turning off uh, when I want to go into manual mode Anyway, I told him, hey, we might go on vacation for a, a month, maybe even longer, you know, and I don't want this thing coming on. He said, the only thing is, is maybe your refrigerator, if you have something in the refrigerator. But I'm thinking, if we're going to be gone for a month or two, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to have to put that on my to-do list to make sure we have nothing in the freezer that uh, we can afford to lose. So that, as they say, is that. One more thing. 
to worry about when we go on vacation to put on our to-do list and now we have backup generator yay and for my closing scene we'll just in the basement here you can see there's a new line coming in from that switch box instead of from the meter so that's all we have uh, so on the inside of the house you'll you know there's nothing really to do and I want to thank you for watching my video.